Welcome back to Indiana is Ag plus Bio plus Science, presented by Agrinovus Indiana and Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick, the host of this weekly podcast where we talk about the convergence of food, agriculture, science, and technology, and the impact it is having and will have on the state of Indiana and beyond. And we're very pleased to have as our guest this week, Gary Morris, the President and Chief Operating Officer at Clabber Girl, the Terre Haute-based uh, company that uh, really uh, is an icon in the Indiana business community. And Gary, thanks for making the trip over from oh, Terre Haute. Absolutely. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Well, talk about Clabber Girl, certainly. But let's uh, give us a, a little <clears throat> bit of the background on Gary Morris, uh, you know, President of the company, uh, how you got there, some of a little bit of your background. Well, I've spent um, my entire career in the food business and uh, operated several businesses. I've either been making, selling, uh, and delivering food for uh, longer than I like to think. (laughs) And uh, moved back here uh, 19 years ago now uh, from Michigan. And the Hallman family owned Clabber Girl Corporation and were interested in growing the business. And that's how I ended up back in Terre Haute. Yeah. Let's talk about Clabber Girl. It is a name that many people know. Um, but what an interesting history and that, that a tie between, you mentioned the Holman family, that tie between baking and racing. Give us uh, that, that thumbnail description of Clabber Girl. Well, on, on race day morning, you got to have some brownies to get you going. <laughs> but uh, the Holman and Company was founded in Terre Haute in 1850. And in the late 1870s, they started producing baking powder, which one of the products ended up becoming Clabber Girl brand. And Tony Holman Jr., the grandson of the founder, uh, when he graduated from college, came back and made Clapper Girl a nationally distributed product. He was also a huge race fan. Mm-hmm. And after World War II, purchased Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And the business that remained in Terre Haute as the morphing of the racing grew into the greatest spectacle that it is today uh, is Clapper Corporation yeah. that has continued to grow. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that because, uh, you know, people know the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the 500 and racing. And, and then Clabber Girl, through the, the course of time, has grown into quite an interesting and really technology-focused company. Talk about the growth, maybe from the early days uh, of Clabber Girl into what it is today. Well, uh, Clabber Girl, um, after World War II, there were more people baking from scratch than there are today. And then uh, convenience food started to come in. And when I arrived in uh, 2000, uh, fall of 1999, actually, uh, the primary product was Clabber Girl baking powder, a little white can that you see on the, the grocery store shelf, and retail was the number one product. And today, we sell not only all of the retail brands of baking powder, but we do private label. Uh, for every major retailer, we do cornstarch, uh, sodium bicarb, a variety of packs, canisters, and then we do those for industrial customers, too. Mm-hmm. So uh, the formula for baking powder has been pretty much the same. However, for industrial customers, they have a variety of formulas. So we've gone from two formulas in 1999 up to probably uh, we're over 200 different formulas uh, that we have for a variety of uh, food components, including microencapsulation, which is used in the leavening of frozen foods and the preservation of tortillas. So as you look at that and technology and innovation and how it weaves itself into into your business, you, you mentioned uh, uh, the, the allergy-free phenomenon and 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 how um, really involved Clabber Girl is is in that. And then plant proteins, you're getting into new yeah. products that you'll be uh, be on store shelves. So the trying to stay relevant to not only the consumer that goes to the grocery store, which there's a whole other conversation about how we will purchase groceries in the future, and that's already changing substantially. But the industrial customers, the consumer is looking for visibility. They want they want to know where the product came from, how it was produced, and then how it was managed. And then the regulations in the food manufacturing uh, from the FDA have changed substantially. So we really are focused on how we segregate the products, making sure that the products that are in there are clearly identified, the labels, we can trace that all the way back to the supplier, the manufacturer of those products. We do a lot of dry powders. Uh, We also do royal puddings, gelatins, cheesecakes, soft serve. And as a result of that, and looking at the elderly uh, population, needing the nutritional enhancement that they're they're somewhat missing because they just don't want to eat very much. So uh, we've fortified some of our soft serve mixes and our shake mixes with plant proteins, uh, have developed formulas that are based on uh, 
muffin mixes, cake mixes for plant protein 100%, which give you 15 uh, to 24 grams of protein, which is a really, really large segment of the future for food, is protein. And plant protein is, a, is the leading edge of that. Well, let's talk about that because innovation, and again, as you say, staying relevant, very important to, to your business. And as you look at what's going on in Indiana, not only at Clabber Girl, but other companies, there are collaborations and, and, and partnerships. I don't know if you can talk a little bit, before we started the podcast, you talked about uh, the, a potential new product uh, that has um, a connection to Beck's Hybrids uh, as well. I think that's a great example of what's going on in Indiana and kind of that bigger picture of where the ag biosciences sector is going. Well, Within the products that we offer, um, we have genetically modified, non-genetically modified, and now we're moving into some organic cornstarch. And that cornstarch that we will be packing this next year and distributing nationally under our Rumford label is going to be a product that started with Beck's in their labs, and it's an organic seed that they then sell to their producers that then processed here in Indiana that we'll end up putting into our containers and shipping all over the country and exporting to 42 different countries that we sell to today. And so it's that connection that I think the general public sometimes forgets this is a small community and we're all in the same food chain and every bit of this is connected from the science, technology, mm -hmm. the plants, and we have limited resources. So how do we use those effectively and manage them so that we can get the most out of it? Talk about um, Clabber Girl's involvement with Agrinovus. I believe you yeah. were uh, certainly uh, among the first members and supporters of Agrinovus. Why, in your view, is it important for Clabber Girl to support the efforts of Agrinovus? Well, from from the Clabber Girl's our perspective, corporate perspective, um, we have to be relevant and grow. And there's so much that we didn't know about what was going on in all of the sciences and everybody, whether it's an animal feed or whether it's plant, it's all connected. So for us, having that relevance and understanding so that we can see where that future is going and hopefully put ourselves and our company in front of that and be relevant again for the next 100, 200 years. You touched on this earlier, but I want to circle back to it. Um, consumers today are, are so much more engaged and more vocal about that intersection of technology and innovation in the food system. H how are you navigating or reacting to those to those viewpoints? We spend a lot of time doing uh, surveys of various uh, age groups. And uh, on top of that, we're members of Agrinovus and a variety of other food organizations that uh, trend. And so consumer trends and what let me step back. If you go back to, say, 2002, 2003, um, product that was non-genetically modified, consumers, mainline consumers are saying, well, I'm really not interested. And we were also saying at the time that gluten-free products was primarily for people with celiac disease. Well, today, both of those are mainstream. Whether you agree or disagree with it or not, that's what consumers are doing. So it's the same issue with protein. So what are those issues that are coming up? What is it they want to see? And it goes from packaging to the sourcing of the material, how the crops were planted, what was applied to the crops, how were the animals treated? It's the awareness of the consumers have today is beyond belief. It used to be when I was a kid, they'd take you to the grocery store. Unless you grew up on a farm, you thought milk came from the grocery store. So today they're really concerned about how that milk is arrived at, and there are a lot of alternatives for that too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, careers at, at, at yeah. Clabber Girl, and you, and you look more broadly uh, in the food and, and uh, ag innovation space, so many job opportunities out there. In fact, so many, not enough uh, folks graduating from college to fill those positions. Talk about some of the jobs at Clabber Girl and your view of the whole workforce uh, situation. Yeah, and for, for us in the food manufacturing, uh, what we're looking for is pretty much across the board. Uh, we need you know, accounting, finance, and Analyst is a big deal. Uh, and software applications, how do we gather the information? How do we manage it? And then food scientists. Uh, we have, uh, for our small company, we have four food scientists involved in a variety of things in the research and R&D that goes into that. And then you move into the manufacturing side of it, the biggest challenge, not just only for us, but every manufacturer, are highly skilled maintenance people. And the technical yeah. skills required for the equipment that's being produced today, which is highly automated, and then the operators just don't stand there and move 
A to B an item. They have to be engaged in teamwork, they're using computers, they have to understand quality control and processes. So the, um, a lot of times we end up training our own staff to teach mm -hmm. them on the production line and then recruiting individuals at the higher level uh, mm -hmm. jobs to come into Terre Haute. Good. Final question for you, Gary, as you kind of look uh, ahead uh, and you see uh, where things are, how Indiana is positioned in the ag bioscience space, what Clabber Girl is doing, your vision for the future and the potential that this sec sector offers for the state of Indiana. Well, I, I hope uh, and where I see it going is it becomes a a focal point for the rest of the nation to say, look, here is how these organizations have worked together, they understand how they interact with each other, and have learned from each other. Even though I, our business, we're not developing seeds and we're not developing vaccines, but there are processes, techniques that we can learn from each other and so become a hub that then spreads out to the rest of, of the country and the expertise and hopefully it becomes an economic engine that attracts people. You know what? I'd kind of like to live in Indiana. I mm -hmm. think Indianapolis or even Terre Haute would be a nice mm -hmm. place to live for quality yeah. of life and look at the opportunities we have for careers. Okay, I lied. I have one more question for you. Tell us about the Clabber Girl restaurant. I've eaten there. It's in Terre Haute, downtown Terre Haute. Uh, a wonderful place to grab something to eat and a cool, a cool venue. A lot of neat stuff there. Well, we, um, the premier item there is our Rex Coffee. And Hallman and Company back in the day used to produce all kinds of food items, one of which was Rex Coffee. So we still roast very small batch Rex Coffee, which if you're a coffee drinker, which I know you are, mm -hmm. It's excellent. Yep. It is the best coffee. I've but had the it. food, yeah, we have two chefs um, who produce regular menus for our staff, and we have a wonderful staff, a lot of students from Rose Hallman, mm -hmm. Indiana State, St. Mary's work there. And our focus in a classroom kitchen is teaching people how to cook good food. How do you prepare food from scratch? And if you have the opportunity to do that, mm -hmm. here's how you can do it. So we're about the food, whether you bake it or you're going to make a cup of coffee or mm -hmm. uh, grill a steak. It's a great place. So anyone traveling through or to Terre Haute, stop by that Clabber Girl operation indeed. Gary Morris, the president and COO at Terre Haute-based Clabber Girl. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Well, that does it for another episode of the Ag Plus Bio, Bio Plus Science podcast. It's our look at food, agriculture, science, and technology all coming together to impact the state of Indiana. I'm Gary Dick. We'll see you next time. This podcast is a product of Inside Indiana Business, hosted by Gary Dick, produced by Libby Fritz and Joe Ullery, and was recorded on location at Launch Fishers. More people get Indiana Business news from Inside Indiana Business than any other source.